Good afternoon. It is 1235 on this Monday. I'm Julie Broughton. This is Take Six. We're so happy you're with us today to talk a little bit more about what we're working on for News 6 later today. I hope you had a nice relaxing holiday weekend. Maybe got to spend some time with friends and family. Now most of us back to real life and that's certainly what we have going on at News 6 today. Joining us today on Take Six, we have News 6 investigator Eric Sandoval. And Eric, I'm so interested in your story today. You were talking about Sid Citrus greening disease, and this could impact us all and really potentially devastating for our citrus industry. Yeah, you know, you, you hear citrus greening disease, and you almost just want to tune out. It just mm -hmm. it doesn't sound very, very uh, exciting. But let me just put it up, boil it all down into a consumer uh, context for everybody. If you buy orange juice or if you buy oranges at the grocery store, this will impact you directly. And if you work in Florida citrus, citrus industry, it's going to impact you directly because citrus greening disease is basically killing most of the oranges that you're seeing in this video right now. You see that discoloration on the mm -hmm. oranges there and the discoloration on the uh, leaves. This is a bacteria that's carried by small insects, Julie, and it's, it's brought to these citrus groves throughout the state of Florida and it's killing the oranges. And I just wanna throw a number at you. Since 2005, Florida's citrus uh, production has dropped 80%. Wow. That, that just blew me away mm -hmm. when I heard that. Over the last year alone, it has dropped 66%. That means fewer oranges are actually making it to store shelves. That means fewer oranges are actually being turned into juice. Mm -hmm. And that's really, uh, it was a driver in Florida's economy for so long, and it still is a driver. And we wanna make sure yeah. that, uh, workers don't lose their jobs and that we continue to get orange juice. I mean, that sounds really uh, self-serving there, but I like orange juice. I like orange right. juice and I want to make sure that they continue to, to appear on our store shelves. Right. And this affects all citrus. I admit, I didn't know much about this. I was in the morning meeting and you were talking about mm -hmm. your story coming up tonight. And so then I was reading a little more about it, you know, preparing for this. And mm -hmm. the thing that's so troubling is there is no cure, but the University of Florida, they're, they're working on this, right? Yeah, and you know, this basically boils down to genetics. I don't know if you've done your ancestry.com or any, mm -hmm. you know, D DNA testing to see, you know, where your family lineage comes from. They're using that same technology to basically find um, strains of orange trees or, or, you know, grapefruit trees that have a hardy resistance to this disease because there are some trees. That, You'll go to a grove, all of them will have citrus greening disease, but then there's this one that's just saying, hey, come try my oranges. You know, <laughs> we have plenty of oranges here. They're resistant to it for some reason. And the scientists wanna, you know, take the genes from that tree, find out why it's resistant to this, and then give that seedling to growers and say, hey, try this in your groves. Is it gonna be as resistant? And they're hoping that genetic science in this case is actually gonna be saving Florida's citrus industry. Really, really fascinating stuff. I love the analogy because so many of us have done our DNA through Ancestry or 23andMe. Yeah. So that, yes, yes, I've done both. <laughs> we actually did a story on it. That's when Lisa Bell found a brother she didn't know she had. Oh, that's right. Si I yes, forgot side about note. that. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> that's so fascinating. And, you know, you think about it before the theme parks came along, you know, citrus was our main industry here. Still so mm -hmm. many family owned groves. This is just such a big deal and affects everybody. Absolutely. And, you know, you, you hit the nail on the head, you know, when you used to drive out to Disney or even I'm going to say Lake County, if you're driving out to Claremont, it used to be so many orange groves. And, you know, if you're not selling your orange grove to a developer for high dollar and losing the citrus trees that way, citrus greening is going to be on the other side. Mm -hmm. if, if you're not selling to a developer and, and that, you know, paves over the citrus groves, this disease is just going to be the death nail in uh, the citrus industry. And these, you know, researchers at the University of Florida, they're basically saying, not on my watch. L let's, right. let's figure this out and find a solution. And my hat's off to them. They actually walked us around a citrus grove in Polk County at the citrus research and education uh, facility they have down there. It was pouring down rain, I have to say. And my hat's off to them for, you know, braving the rain and showing us what this disease is doing and sharing what they're doing to solve this. Mm -hmm. 
You know, and it's something that I know so many people, myself included, you know, you just take for granted going to the grocery store, going to the farmer's market. Absolutely. And, you know, oh, this is great. You know, I get to, you know, bite into this orange. And so it really is something, like you said, hats off to these researchers because they're just brilliant and they're going to, you know, make a big difference. Yeah. And we got, and, you know, we're trying to save the trees and the big hardy ones. I, I think I mentioned this in the morning meeting, Julie. You know, they, they may be saving the oranges, you know, resistant to this virus, but how do they taste? We, they, they, <laughs> these researchers want to make sure they taste just yes. as good as the other ones, because if, if it doesn't, they're doing this all for naught. Right. What's the point? Did you do a taste test? I did. You get to see that at six. You get to see it all <laughs> dribbling down my chin. That's a it's great tease. I, I, I will tune in. All right, Eric <laughs> Thanks, Sandoval, Julie. thank you so much. I can't wait to see your full story. Yeah, we'll see you at six. All right. Let's get a check of your weather now. You know, we always love to talk about the weather. And if you've been outside today, you know that some cooler air is building. In fact, we are talking about some of the coolest air on the season on its way to Central Florida right now. Now, here's a look at the regional map. It shows you the southeastern United States where it's 42 right now in Nashville, 49 in Atlanta, 52 in Pensacola, 67 in Orlando. But look to our south. That is where we're seeing a cold front that has passed through. That is dropping to the south behind that high pressure building in. And with that north Northerly flow that is helping to transport that cooler air. You'll also notice, especially earlier this morning, we had quite a bit of thick cloud cover in place. Some of that began to break up a little bit. Right now it is 63 in Ocala, 66 in Cape Canaveral, 65 in Melbourne, 66 in Kissimmee, 64 in Palm Coast and Daytona Beach. You are checking in at 62 degrees. Now here's a look at the winds coming in out of the northwest. A little breezy at times along the coast with winds up to 11 miles per hour right now in Cape Canaveral. Overall, though, winds not too too big of an issue for us, but again, those winds are bringing in that cooler air from our north. Now we will get a few degrees warmer throughout the day today, hitting 71 for our high in Orlando, 67 in Daytona Beach, 73 today in Cocoa Beach. Now here's a look at the clouds and rain forecast as we roll you through the afternoon hours. Some of those thicker clouds we're seeing now and that we saw earlier today will begin to thin, moving through the overnight hours. Skies will continue to be mostly clear for us, again, letting the temperatures drop. And remember, it's always the second day that is the coolest behind that front. So we're talking about Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. That will be some of the coldest air we have seen all season. In fact, some of our northern interior counties could dip into the 30s, start things out for Wednesday morning, and we'll keep it mostly dry as we head through the next couple of days. So here's a look at how things shape up for the next seven days. 61 for our high tomorrow. And then Wednesday morning, look at that 45. Now remember, that's the low in Orlando. So north and west, that's where we're talking about the potential of temperatures in the mid to upper 30s, going to 67 for our high on Wednesday. Then warming back up as we head into the weekend, we'll bring our next best chance of rain back into the picture for your Friday. Chief Meteorologist Tom Sorrells will break down what will be bringing that rain to us as we head into our upcoming weekend. He'll be here starting on News 6 at 4. At least Isabel, Ginger Gaston, and I will see you at four as well. If you have any comments or questions for us here at Take Six, we always love to hear from you. Head to clickorlando.com slash take six. Let us know what's on your mind. Thank you so much for stopping by, and I will see you at four.